We greet the beloved church, and you that honor us with your presence, visiting us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite everyone to open up the Bibles and the Gospel of John, chapter 5, Gospel of John, chapter 5. We're going to read only verse number 8. John, Gospel John, chapter 5, verse 8. The Bible says the following. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. O Lord God, your word has been read, and in it there is power. Let's meditate on it. Let's meditate on it. We ask you for your grace, your love, your mercy. Because as we meditate in it, we are vivified, Lord, so that tonight your word may find a home in many hearts and everyone by your infinite mercy. Speak to, it, to us in the depth of our hearts. Show your glory. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The word of the Lord in the text that we just read speaks of something supernatural that happened in the days of the Lord Jesus. There was a well called Bethesda. And the world of the Lord describes that in a moment. Without setting up a date, an angel would go down to this well and stir the waters. And at the moment in which the waters were stirred, whoever was thrown into these waters was cured. It doesn't matter what uh, illness he might have, might have had. And the Bible says that this news was well spread around and, and this well was always surrounded by many people, uh, uh, blind, crippled, people of all sorts of illnesses. They gathered around this well. So as the water was stirred, that they may, may throw themselves into the water and be cured. And it's interesting that this well had a position at the gate of the the, uh, the sheep uh, in Jerusalem, each gate had a name, and this gate, uh, not by chance, but provisionally, was called the was called the uh, the gate called sheep was close to the well of Bethel, and uh, we heard yesterday in the message that. A sheep is a very fragile and defenseless animal, can get stressed very easily. Easily, a uh, sheep can get stressed and scared. Has anybody, can anybody identify with it? Uh, I'm the first one to raise, raise my hand. We are sheep. We are all sheep. As a sheep, we are fragile. We are imperfect. We are defenseless. A sheep does have claws. Does it have uh, fangs? Does any ways of defending themselves? The name of the instrument of defense of uh, the sheep is the shepherd. That's the defense of the sheep. The shepherd has a staff, has a rod to protect, to help, to bring it closer to the right path, to deviate the sheep from the path of danger. And not by accident, this man that was uh, uh, has had been crippled for 38 years, and on that day he was alone, and Jesus came close, and he began 
to speak to him, asking what what is your situation, and he's doing this to you and to me tonight. He has done already done this during the worship. Jesus is speaking to us. He is calling us by our names. He wants to hear from you. What is your necessity? What is your problem? I entered here with a necessity. I actually entered here with many necessities and problems, like everyone. And we are defenseless, we are fragile, and like we learned in the message yesterday. Uh, the sheep does not see from afar. That's what we are. We cannot make a lot of projects in our lives. We make a couple of projects according to what we know, according to what we study, what according to what we heard and, and we learned, the knowledge, but uh, afterwards we, know, we realize that our plans are not fulfilled the way we want it. And do you know what ha happens to us? It stresses us out. And the Lord, the Good Shepherd, the one that gives His life for the sheep, is here tonight looking at you. And he knows the degree of your stress. Stress. He knows that the size of your pain and the, your wound, the depth and the extension of your wound. Believe in it. Believe in it. And his operation has already started, even before the service started. The fact that you w didn't give up and you came here to this place is already a miracle. It's an operation of wonder. Glorify the name of the Lord. Many things could have happened that would have prevented you from being here tonight. But we believe by faith the angels of the Lord have been sent to each one of the homes of each brother. Many camped around the car, the vehicles to bring you here without any problem. And here we are. The text in the Bible says that it was a day of the week called it was a Saturday. And here are we Saturday. Today is Sunday according to the calendar, but Jesus is our Saturday. Saturday means rest. And Jesus operated on a Saturday and many criticized him. Because the Bible said that on a Saturday we are not supposed to do anything, not even cure. And the answer of Jesus to this question was Who among you having a sheep that fall into a dangerous place? And on a Saturday, go, not go there and help. He had the right answer coming from eternity. And this is the gospel that we are presenting you tonight. A gospel that goes beyond the things of this world. A gospel that is not attached to pro, uh, financial prosperity or something physical or a solution to a problem of, on this life. The gospel that we are presenting you is the gospel, uh, is eternal gospel. A gospel that takes me to return victories for this life but above all a place of rest to your soul and uh, he, Jesus was having a conversation with this man he asked something that was very obvious I mean he would have thought Jesus how can Jesus ask something to that man something like this to that man do you want to be cured Jesus saw him laying down Jesus knew that he was already in that way and Jesus still asks do you want to be cured and that man his answer was many times our, our answer, your, my answer, your answer to what the Lord communicated with us. He wants to operate a blessing. He sits by our side. We are laying down spiritually. Spiritually, we are 38 years without walking, uh, crippled, without being able to walk and move around. Our life is stagnated. And Jesus began to talk to us and ask, do you want to be cured? And what happens to us naturally? to us who are humans and weak uh, sheep, we begin to argue with Jesus. And that man answered, Jesus, I don't have anybody that would put me into the well. Every time the water is stirred, as I'm going down, somebody else come before me. And that's our nature. Our nature is that I want a blessing. I would love to be cured. I would love to receive a blessing, but there is always a but. There is always, however, there is always why another day, another day, not today. Today I'm working or studying too much. I don't have anybody to help me. Everybody criticizes me. 
But that, that was not the answer that Jesus wanted to hear. This, is, this was not the answer that Jesus wanted to hear. Jesus wanted to see the faith of that man and the desire and the belief that he was in the presence of the one that could give an order, the one that gave the order to the angel to come down and stir the water. And this is what happened to us. You are the gate of the ship. You are a ship. You, have, you are the right of a ship. And what is your right as a ship? Your first right is to have a shepherd. And Jesus here is present. He is saying, I'm your shepherd. Jesus is, the Lord is our shepherd. And the rights of the sheep are many. We will not lack anything. We have the right to be carried to uh, peaceful waters, to refresh our soul, to quench our thirst. And this is what is happening to us tonight. You are in front of the river, which is the Holy Spirit of God. Drink of His waters, refresh your soul. Doesn't matter the hurt, the heat, uh, or the suffering you're going through. Come to the waters, come to drink and quench your thirst, the thirst of your soul. As a sheep, you also have the right to go on green pastures. This is the the by, by the Lord is the the word of the Lord is the green pastures, the feed, the food for our soul. You came here to this place as a spiritual strategy because the Lord brought you here because He knew that your soul was hungry. And now you're here in front of a banquet. The Lord says that He prepares to the sheep as a right to the sheep. A banquet, a table. The table is ready. The Holy Spirit placed the table in, in the presence of our enemies. Because uh, the word of the Lord says that the angels of the Lord camp around us and deliver us. And the enemy of our souls is not around us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is outside, uh, warring as a lion. But he's not the lion. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he brought you here and allowed you to be here present. Allowed you to know uh, well that he, Hebrews speaks of Bethesda speaks house of mercy and one of the roots of the word Bethesda is the extract of the olive and Jesus and from the olive is, is the oil the olive oil is made Jesus gave himself on the cross he allowed himself to be crushed so that his Holy Spirit be would be sent as a counselor and now we have this experience with the Lord Jesus who was crushed and from olive, um, oil was made and, and the olive, olive oil that covered your wound and now as a sheep you were being treated by him. He's talking to you. And after the dialogue, Jesus told him simply, get up, take up your bed and walk. And this word was a text that we read together. May it be um, etched in our hearts. The first word was, get up. Why did the Lord ask this? Because spiritually, he knew that you were prostrated. Maybe spiritually, entered here in a wheelchair. Maybe spiritually, entered here, carried by others. Like that man, crippled spiritually. And the Lord is giving you the first order. The order is, get up. What is the second order of the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit? Take up your bed. The, the bed is a place for rest, but it's not for you to, to stay on it all the time. It's for, for a moment of rest. The world is out there. We are working, living, studying, raising families, but we cannot only live like if nothing was necessary for us. The Lord knows all things. He gave to them in a lesson. Go, get up, take up your bed, and walk. Who could have said that to that man? No one. No man had the authority to do that. There, there were not doctors uh, there with enough power to make a man that was, for 30 years was crippled, get up, and by miracle walk. But he was in the presence of the doctor of doctors. He was in the presence of the good shepherd. He was in the presence of the one that had power over heaven and earth, and he can do everything that we need. We just have to have faith. You went in this place by faith. Do you know that? Maybe your mind and soul, you came here to 
please a friend, but the Holy Spirit touched your heart and moved you by faith to be here in this place. And as the group sings a song, close your eyes. And it doesn't matter how you enter. You came crippled, you came on a wheelchair, you came hurt, you came wounded. You have something in your life that you are not pleased with, something that is evil, something that causes you to think on the, on the sadness of stagnation of this life. There is something that can, there is somebody that can resolve your problem. May it be in your mind, your heart, in your feelings. The power of the blood of Jesus is with us. That's at the beginning of the service. We plead for the power of the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus forgive us of every sin. Sin makes sustain in our lives and it causes pain. It, it causes shame. It causes in us uh, deep sadness. But today you're here. You don't even have to see any supernatural waters being stirred because Jesus is present. The King of Kings is present and He is directing towards you and He's saying, Get up, take up your bed and walk. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Remain in fellowship. If you want, close your eyes. Don't let anything to interfere with you and God because it's an operation of wonder being happening tonight. Cure is deliverance, salvation. Believe in it. Take possession of your victory. You are in the presence of the King of Lord. You are in the presence of the one that has all the power to resolve any, uh, whatever is your need. Lord has shown tonight. There's a group of people that entered here. They have been living in darkness. The Holy Spirit shown, has shown this. It's something in the Bible is called spiritual gifts. The spiritual gifts, dear and I. And through one of them, the Bible show, sh has shown that there are people that need to experience the light. They are being invited. They are being called to this light. You are being invited to experience this light to get out of darkness, to enter into one wonderful light. And this light is called Jesus. And the Lord has shown a man and a woman. They are like this man that, of the text that we just read. They are stagnated spiritually. They are suffering because of that. But there is a, a hand that has been stretched to help them. The hand of the Good Shepherd. The hand that says, will not lack anything. And anoint your head and fill your, uh, your cup with salvation. And the one that con uh, talks, speaks to you, and uh, protect you. My rod and I sh fa staff pr protect you. I protect you from falling to an abyss, and you may lose your life. The good shepherd stretch his land to bless a man and this woman. They are here tonight, 
And also the Lord shown another man that this tired is hurting for this mark of the sin that has touched his mind. But today is a day of salvation, it's a day of deliverance. Take possession of this blessing. Take possession of the power of the blood of Jesus and your mind will be purified and you no longer have a mark that will leave you in a situation of shame but there will be the mark of the blood of Jesus that removes you from darkness into light you are in the presence of the Good Shepherd you are in the well of Bethesda and the waters are being stirred the waters of the Holy Spirit let's be the name of the Lord because these angels are here present and you are hearing from the Lord get up, take up your bed and walk the church now standing up glorifying the name of the Lord Praise the one that can do all things there. Lord of Lords, the doctor of doctors, glory to Jesus. Whatever is your situation, blindness, paralysis, whatever situation you may be going through, the Lord is ready to cure you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Take possession of your victory. Take possession of salvation. Be with us, Lord. We need you. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. to God. Isn't it good to be in the presence of the Lord? 
This is our place. We feel like we are at home because we are in the house of the Father. He is our shepherd, the Lord Jesus. When we are praying for the service tonight, the gifts that we mentioned, one of the texts was the following. Every weapon that was prepared against you will not prevail. Every tongue that may judge you, you will condemn them. This is the inheritance of the service of the Lord. And he is right that proceed from me, says the Lord. Why are we mentioning this? As if this text was opened up as we were consulting the gifts, there is mystery in this text for my life and your life. Because he didn't come to this, this place in vain. This is not a social gathering. Social gathering, if it, it was just social, it would be the worst place. But this place has life because the, the owner of life is here. He said this meeting between you and I and the verse 9, just to conclude, says the following. And immediately, immediately, the man was, was cured. And do you see yourself like this? Amen. And taking up his bed, began to walk. And that day was Saturday. The Sabbath. Uh, you came here to find the Jesus of salvation. And you may be asking, what can I do? Do I have to write, fill out a form to become a member of this church? No. In your heart, there, where you are, you can say, I accept Jesus as my Savior, and salvation will be part of your life. You may be asking, and then afterwards, and tomorrow. And tomorrow is Monday. It's a holiday. But how about Tuesday? You know, go back to work and studies. What is going to happen to my life? Your life will be at peace because the King of Glory is present. He's proclaiming peace to your life. Accept Jesus as your Savior and see what is going to happen to your life. See what is going to happen in your daily life. See what God is going to do in your life as a consequence of this salvation. My brethren, this man has life changed after 38 years. I don't know for how long you have been without a blessing, without walking, without experiencing being standing spiritually. But today the Lord, the Holy Spirit held you by your hand, stood you up, and now as a church we are here at your disposal to hold you on your hand and help you walk on these first steps in your walk towards heaven. We as church are saying, you are welcome. You came welcome to the light and the enemy of our soul, the one that you serve up until now, is going to start telling you, hey, I'm not going to allow you to enter into this path. I'm going to uh, make uh, use of um, weapons to prevent you from going there. But uh, that's why I'm using this text to proclaim to each one that made that as decision that that decision that I accept Jesus as my Savior. There is no weapon that will prevail against those that accept Jesus as their Savior. You today have your name written in the Book of Life. Take possession of this blessing. Glorify the Lord. Because now you know where your soul will rest. You know that your mind will be controlled by this anointing of the oil that is upon you. This anointing that comes upon your head. It was mentioned in Psalm 23. Anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Now a word of glorification to the Lord, because the Lord has operated cures of deliverance and salvation. Anyone may praise the name of the Lord. We want to praise the name, because through the power of the word, um, shackles were being broken. Salvation was happened tonight. I want to raise your name up high because you are everything for us. Because you're King of Glory. Because you put us standing. Because there's and, and uh, there's nothing in us that would allow us to be here. But by your mercy, we're here. We praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. We praise the Lord and hand to you this service into an altar and the acts of justice of the Lord be perpetually upon us to protect us even after we leave this place and our daily lives and our activities as we're waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Maranatha it will be fulfilled we believe and Lord we ask that we may be walking in the presence of the Lord in the name of Jesus we pray Amen, Amen.
the church may be seated. I'm going to say, uh, uh, give a welcome to all of those that accepted the invitation to be in the House of Mercy, in Bethesda, the House of Mercy. Come more times. Our next activity is going to be Wednesday at, at 8 o'clock. A meeting that was conducted by the women of the church where the Lord has operated wonderfully. And Thursday we have a, a, serve, a prayer service at 8 o'clock as well. And Saturdays and Sundays, 7.30 p.m. And in the morning, 10.30 uh, Sunday school. And now we're going towards you to greet you, to say you. May the peace of the Lord be with your life. Remain the place where you are as the group is singing. Raise your hand or someone that is sitting by, by you to raise their hands so that one of the workers may pray with you and seal this blessing that the Lord has given you.